hi there in this video our topic of discussion is shogun syndrome as uh, it seems difficult to pronounce its normal pronunciation is shogun syndrome and uh, ignore my bad handwriting uh, you can write very very well but uh, my handwriting is bad as you can see uh, so what is shogun syndrome shogun syndrome is basically uh, autoimmune disease in which there is autoimmune destruction of the salivary glands and lacrimal glands when salivary glands are destroyed then there is dry mouth which is called xerostomia and when lacrimal glands are destroyed there are dry eyes which is called keratoconjunctivitis okay so when eyes become dry or when there is keratoconjunctivitis what happens there will be blurred vision because uh, eye will be dry and there can be damage to the cornea and so on so vision will be blurred and there will be burning sensation in eyes there will be itching in the eyes and when there will be dry mouth there will be no uh, saliva mediated lubrication of the solid uh, food so there will be difficulty in swallowing there will be cracks and fissures in the mouth and there will be decrease in taste sensation as well as dryness in the mouth okay so uh, it can be primary or it can be secondary when it is present alone it is called primary form and it is called sika syndrome in this condition however if it is linked to other autoimmune diseases are present with other autoimmune diseases which can be rheumatoid arthritis which can be systemic lupus which can be scleroderma it is called secondary disease or secondary form okay <clears throat> so what happens uh, in this pathogenesis it is autoimmune destruction of lacrimal and salivary glands and in this autoimmune attack basically helper t cell or cd4 cells and b lymphocytes are involved so it is a uh, t cell mediated destruction of the uh, gland so it is basically type 4 hypersensitivity reaction so it may follow a viral infection of the salivary glands when there is viral infection there can be necrosis of the cell which uh, exposes the self antigen and uh, there can be breakdown of the self tolerance which lead to the uh, production of the auto auto reactive cells which attack these gland and destroy them it mostly occurs in women in their 50s or 60s okay uh, so in addition to the uh, salivary gland and lacrimal gland this disease can also attack the glands in vagina it can attack the glands in respiratory tract or gi tract okay uh, so it can also cause respiratory symptoms as well as gastrointestinal symptoms so uh, what are it other symptoms which can be uh, due to involvement of gastric tract or you can say respiratory tract there can be uh, parotid enlargement uh, because when there will be attack there will be swelling and so on so there will be parotid enlargement uh, there can be uh, dryness of nasal mucosa uh, when it attacks respiratory uh, pathway respiratory tract it can lead to dryness of nasal mucosa and dryness of nasal mucosa can cause septal perforation it can cause epistaxis or bleeding from the nose and it can cause recurrent bronchitis and pneumonitis okay, okay. due to uh, involvement of the uh, respiratory mucosa okay uh, so in some condition it can cause in some cases it can cause extra glandular manifestation what are its extra glandular manifestation these are basically manifestation which does not involve glands okay so these manifestation uh, if uh, there is a widespread inflammation you can uh, know it can damage the, the multiple tissues and uh, organs of the body so uh, this disease can cause extra glandular manifestation also which include synovitis or inflammation of synovial membrane which can cause arthritis like symptom it can cause pulmonary fibrosis it can lead to the uh, peripheral neuropathy it can uh, uh, cause renal tubular acidosis it does not it does not cause glomerular uh, damage as uh, there is in uh, systemic lupus however it can cause interstitial disease of the kidney and it can damage the renal tubules and it can lead to urea or phosphatemia okay so uh, what is the morphology of this disease uh, salivary gland or lacrimal gland or the gland which are being attacked uh, will be infiltrated by cd4 lymphocytes and there will be a growth of b lymphocyte and uh, lymphocytic uh, infiltration can lead to the formation of follicles with germinal centers 
and the ducts of the gland uh, will be subjected to hyperplasia due to epithelial hyperplasia the ducts will be blocked and uh, there will be atrophy of uh, SNI and fibrosis of the gland so there will be lymphocytic infiltration basically so the core lymphocyte will be involved there will be development of uh, uh, follicles and this follicle will be having germinal center where will be active growth of B lymphocyte and uh, the ducts of the gland will be show epithe will be showing epithelial hyperplasia leading to the obstruction of the ducts and there will be atrophy and fibrosis of the glands okay so what is the diagnostic criteria of this disease diagnosis basically involves the symptoms different symptom of the disease as well as some lab test uh, which include the different antibodies in the uh, circulation and anti ssa and anti ssb antibodies are basically involved in disease pathogenesis and uh, these are the antibodies directed against small lipo nuclear particle they are directed against the lipo nucleoprotein particles lipo nucleoprotein particles okay and other antibodies which are also present in this condition are anti nuclear antibodies which are present in up to 75% of cases and ra anti ra can also be present which are in 50 to 80% of the cases okay so it was a basic uh, you can say overview of the sugans syndrome thank you